Watch it guys, if you never ever want to lose data again, then this video is for you. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at Cloudberry Lab, which is a cross-platform cloud backup software, which you can use with Amazon S3, Amazon Glacier, Microsoft Azure, also a Google Cloud Storage, and loads of others. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, but you can also encrypt all your data, which is really useful. Uh, and you can set up a, a backup plan and backup stuff to there. So you can see this is a, the Cloudberry Lab download page. So I'm going to download this. I'm going to put in my email address and download the software and install this. And I'm going to show you how to set it up. Now, they have got a few pictures on here which helps you set it up. But I'm going to show you how, how to do it step by step, uh, which is pretty easy to do. So I've got this downloaded here. And I'm going to go ahead and install uh, this software onto the computer and then we can set it all up so it will then go ahead and make regular backups of certain data that I want to back up on a regular basis to the cloud. So this is the Cloudberry Backup 5.9.3 setup page. As you can see here, what we're going to do is going to go common and then put it into a destination folder of our choice, which is uh, I'm going to go into my programs folder here. This will then go ahead and install the software into that directory for us. Now I can run Cloudberry Backup. And now we've got the, the choice here to choose for use Home Edition, which is free, or I can start a 15 day trial for free with the full uh, commercial version, or I can activate a commercial version, uh, which I'm going to do because I've got a license key. And you can also set up a store only for free as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the activate uh, commercial version. And now I need to put in my email address and license key. So once you've paid for it and you've registered it, you can go ahead and do that right here. So I've gone in and uh, done that successfully there. And that's now activated. It's now going to open up the software here. So we've got a choice to go through some sort of tutorial stuff here. So I'm just going to close this off because I don't need to do that. I'm just going to go through and show you how to do it. So here we've got the user interface. It's really easy to understand and set up. You can see there's a bunch of stuff here uh, that you can use. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to set this up with uh, Amazon S3. So if you've got an Amazon S3 account and you've got some space there and you want to set this up in conjunction with Amazon S3 or whatever it is that you want to use it for, like Amazon Glacier, Microsoft Azure, something like that, you can do that, okay? So there's a bunch of options here you can mess around with. I'm not going to go into all of this in this video. We're just going to be showing you how to set it up and how to get uh, backups done. So you can see here the backup plan here. We're under backup plans and it's got a bunch of them here already, but they've not been scheduled and they've not been set up. So if you want to set up your own custom one, you can do, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's take a quick glance at the software here. We have got restore plans here. We've also got a backup storage and we've also got history as well. I'm not going to cover all of this in one video. So what I'm going to do is set up a backup plan uh, with Amazon S3 and I'll show you how to do that so you can then uh, take a look at how to do it. So we're going to go up to the top here and you can see here add new account and there's a bunch of other settings inside here what we're not going to touch on in this video. So go add new account and you can see popular storage providers and you can choose whichever one you want to use. Okay so you've got Backblaze, you've got um, loads of other ones there. So what we're going to do is click on the Amazon S3 We've also got Google Cloud there as well. So the most probably common ones here and the most popular ones are probably Amazon, Backblaze and Google uh, Cloud there. So we're going to go ahead and do the Amazon S3 and now we're going to put in our details. Now this is where you need to put in uh, your display name uh, for your account. You also have the drop down arrow where you can have the account type. 
and now we can use the access and secret keys. Now this is what's going to be set up on your Amazon account and I'll show you where you can get that in a second and this is what you need to paste in here so it can link up. You've also got some advanced settings and some proxy settings if you want to make it a bit more secure you can do that there. But if you go over to your Amazon account once you've set it all up and you've got now your account here you can go into the users part and you can see here create access key. Now this is going to be your key which is secret to you you mustn't give it out to anyone else and you can use that key to set up your account this is the actual page here where you can set up whatever you want to uh, purchase here and uh, this is the actual uh, login uh, control panel for Amazon uh, AWS here you can see this is what you're going to have once you've set it all up and this is where you're going to get all your details about uh, what you've got here so uh, create a new bucket upload your data uh, set up permissions, all that sort of stuff here. But we're going to be using uh, the Cloudberry to do all that for us. So I've now got my access key and my secret key uh, pasted into here, and I'm going to give it a account name. And uh, what I'm going to do here is set up a bucket name. So this is what you can do. So create a bucket name here, and uh, once you've got your bucket name and you want to choose that, you just need to click OK, and uh, that will be the bucket name. Uh, that you can use now you can also set up your own custom bucket name if you want to do that I'm going to select the location where I want that which is in the London area and that will go ahead and uh, create our account here so now we've got that we can either add another account if you wanted to if you had more than one account you can add more accounts here and uh, if you've got accounts with different uh, companies you can do that also and you can also edit this account at a later date if you wanted to by just hitting the edit button and you can make changes to that if you want to as well. So let's close this off and go back over to the backup plans here. So this is our account here. So let's go to uh, backup plans and you can see here we've got uh, no backup plan inside here. So we need to uh, create a backup plan. So I'm going to go up to here and create a new a backup plan by clicking on files now you can see here we have local and also cloud backup and we also have hybrid backup and there's a lovely area down the bottom here which has ransomware protection now we all know crypto ransomware is rampant on the internet and if you get hit with uh, ransomware or crypto ransomware it will encrypt all your data and that will be that whereas this will protect you against rant crypto ransomware and stop your data from getting encrypted which means you would have full backups of all your data and you can enable that and set this up i'm not going to set it up for this uh, tutorial but that's basically what i'm going to do here so i'm going to go next and uh, what we're going to do here is we've got the plan name you can change that if you wish i'm going to leave that as is and uh, as you can see here, we've got a bunch of other settings which we can uh, tweak and change. So we've got a couple of options available. I'd like to use AWS Snowball import, or we've got save backup plan configuration to our backup storage, which you can select as well. So you choose which one you want to do there. I'm going to go next and advanced mode here and go next again. Now inside here, we've got some advanced options like use block level backup, backup NTFS permissions, uh, track local uh, file deletions in backup storage, use backup operator, use fast NTFS scan and use system VSS provider and you can change these up and uh, set this up how you want to depending on uh, how you want to set yours up. So just go ahead and uh, select what ones you want to select here and we can now go next. So I'm going to click next here. Now we get the choice to select our backup source so what we need to do we've got some advanced options here which is add a user profile add a network share open in dialog and also show legend and you can see at the top we've got our c drive and d drive you may have more drives or less drives but you can select the whole drive or you can select a, a folder like i'm doing here which is amazon backup and I've got that selected and it will be any data in that one folder which will be uploaded. So I'm going to click next. Now we have advanced filters here and you can back up all files in a selected folders. And we can also back up files in these types. And you can change this up to how you want to set up your filters. 
so we can see here if you wanted to do that you've got the suggestions box here and you've also got do not backup files of these file types and you've also got backup empty folders skip folders backup uh, files modified in so many days backup files modified since uh, do not backup files larger than a certain file size also do not backup system or hidden files and do not backup locked files okay so we've got that also so you can set this up how you want to set yours up so it's entirely up to you how you want to set yours up so I'm just going to leave this as default here and just go next and now we can see we can enable uh, compression and we can also enable encryption which means we can have AES 256 bit encryption on here and you can lower that down if you wish that's quite a lot of encryption you would need a password and you can confirm that password now a word of warning here guys if you forget your password for your encryption you will not be able to recover that data so it's very important that you uh, store this password uh, in a safe place and never forget it otherwise that will be that you will not be able to decrypt uh, AES 256 bit encryption uh, from a password that you've created that you've now forgotten you've also got display password encryption of file names also server side encryption uh, Amazon S3 only you can do that there if you want to that in uh, occurs a couple of other settings like uh, use Amazon S3 server master key and uh, some stuff like that if you want to you will need to put the key ID and all that sort of information in there so I'm going to set up an encryption here and I'm also going to encrypt the final file names on the, the uh, files that I'm encrypting and uh, again keep this password in a safe place preferably not on the computer you want to keep this uh, on maybe a, a password encryption uh, pen or something like that a USB pen around your neck so you know it's um, encrypted at all times and you keep that data like last pass and stuff like that but I store it on a USB pen drive so it's always on my person so that's what I would normally do with passwords and you've also got a server-side encryption here which we've already talked about and we've got the storage class uh, at the bottom here as well uh, which we can uh, do so you can see here s3 will uh, decrypt the object for anyone with permissions to access this object as well so depending on whether you want to set this up I'm not going to set this up I'm going to leave this blank uh, but basically that is the uh, compression and encryption options and the storage class is here so let's go next and move on to the next stage here now next up you've got use defaults or you can specify custom uh, retention policies for backup plans you can set all this up exactly how you want to set yours up everyone's going to want uh, different needs but you can see here if you set up a specified custom retention policies for backup plan you can delete versions older than one day and so on you can set this up how you want keep number of versions for each file and you can also do that as well and you can also uh, delay purge for so many days another one you can do is delete files that have been uh, deleted locally and be careful here because these will be permanently removed and they will not be able to be restored so be very careful if you're using that uh, policy there so we're going to use defaults here and move on to the schedule part which is no schedule run manually so if you want to run it manually you can do you can run it as a specified date and you can do that if you want to by using the specified date and time you can all also uh, set this up how you want you can have reoccurring, reoccurring uh, types of schedules if you want to by uh, putting the radio button in there and this will just let you set up type daily weekly monthly yearly occurs at a certain time and and, and every hour or every two hours or wherever you want it and also from and to uh, times as well you can set it up how you want to inside here now also real-time backup is what I'm going to set mine up to but uh, real-time backup will automatically monitor uh, selective folders uh, for new and updated files and copy them to the cloud storage now we've got a couple of uh, grayed out areas like stop the plan if it runs from hours and minutes and also run miss schedule backups immediately when computer starts up and you would be able to set that up if you choose a different setting there 
Now also notifications, so you can set up notifications for your backup so you can see it will receive notifications via email and this will be uh, when the backup fails or in all cases you can set that up how you like you can put your email here your username and the subject will be cloudberry backup results okay and you can set this up how you like i want to use a smtp server for my email notifications or you can add an entry into the windows event log uh, when plan uh, when the plan completes uh, so you got wh uh, when the backup fails or in all cases if you wanted to do that on the bottom one I want to uh, receive notifications I'm going to take the tick out because this is just a tutorial and I'm not going to be receiving email notifications so I'm going to remove that tick there but it will be a very good tick to leave in to get notifications there so let's go next and you can see here this is all the plan you can see the ransomware protection has been disabled uh, we also have backup mode advanced and we've got our backup source and a bunch of other settings like encryption algorithm is AES 256 and we can also go back and make changes before we commit to this at this stage if we want to do that and that's easy enough to do or you can just go back and go forward and then once you've got this set into place you can edit this at a later date and I'll show you how to do that as well uh, but you can see all our settings are here so let's go ahead and click on uh, next here and uh, get this finished off you can see run back up now if you want to you can say yep let that run now and you can click on finish and uh, it will start a real-time backup uh, which is what I've set it to now you've also can look at the plan itself and you can see here we can edit the plan if we want to I can make changes here I can enable uh, ransomware protection at this stage if I wanted to I can also uh, disable the file encryption I can change the compression and enable that so you can make changes at this stage if you want to you've also got down the bottom here you've got a clone plan uh, view history uh, view backup storage and you can view all your backup storage here if you wanted to do that you also got restore files from here from this little plan also delete and edit so that's pretty much it that's how you can set up your backup plan with uh, cloudberry it's a pretty decent uh, better kit it's also a cross-platform cloud backup software which you can use with all the other types of uh, backup cloud solutions like amazon s3 as you see amazon glacier microsoft azure uh, google cloud storage and many others okay now if you haven't set up a backup um, plan yet then this is the time to do it uh, ransomware is always about and you can get it by ransomware anytime and if it encrypts all your data you're pretty much done for unless you pay the ransom this sort of setup is going to protect you and your data and it's also going to be encrypted and you can keep it in a nice safe location where you can always have backups of all your precious data and uh, it's not that dear it really is uh, pretty affordable anyway i'm going to wrap this one up i hope this one helps you out my name is uh brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk remember the golden rule guys back up back up back up it's always important to back up your data i shall see you again for another video real soon thanks again for watching bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the big red subscribe button on my youtube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos Thank <laughs> you.